Welcome to worship. I am so delighted that you've chosen to join with us today. It is the first Sunday of the month, so hopefully you have gathered up your communion elements. We will be celebrating that later in the service. Uh, or perhaps you came to our drive through or plan to come to our drive through where you can pick up those elements to take them home. Um, feel free to just rummage through your kitchen and find what you can use uh, for juice as well as for bread. Crackers work just fine too. Uh, but go ahead and make sure that you've got those ready. If you're our guest, we're especially delighted that you've chosen to join with us. My name is Yvonne Kuhn, and it's such a joy to serve on the team here at this church. Um, we have a connection card that you can fill out online. You should have received information about that either in the email or you'll find it on the Facebook page or our YouTube page. Uh, it's also on screen if you want to type that in. I hope you'll take some time to fill that out for us. We do look forward to hearing from you and certainly want to know how we can uh, remain connected as we continue to be in this virtual world. Um, but if you have gathered up your elements for communion, if you have created a sacred space wherever it is that you're watching from and have candles, I want to invite you to go ahead and light those candles. This is something we do each and every week simply to remind us to be aware of God's presence with us at all times. And as I pour the water, I invite you to remember God's claim on your life, to know that God looks upon you every single moment and says you are mine. You are holy. You are sacred. You are valued. You are worthy. You are God's beloved child. And it's out of that deep love that God has for us that we come together seeking to know this God who loves us. And then we're invited to live out that love everywhere we go. We do serve an incredible God. Amen. But we've gathered to worship. And so I want to invite you to simply take some time. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to breathe deeply. Allow your body to relax. Settle your mind down. We've been focused on the words of the psalmist as he cried out. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And put a new and right spirit within me. So we open ourselves to the God who is ever present with us. Seeking that new and right spirit. Seeking that clean heart as we continue on this Lenten journey. Let us worship. Amen. my heart of oh God make it ever true change my heart of oh
Well, today's Bible story is about when Jesus took five loaves and two fish and fed an entire crowd of more than 5,000 people. And I'm guessing with that many people, somebody probably stuck a fish in the bread and made a sandwich. <laughs> like, maybe? But that is not at all what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just anyone from today's Bible story. I'm talking about Jesus. Um, Jesus' prayer sandwich in today's Bible story is the most important part of the story to me. See, first, Jesus prayed. He took the bread and the fish and lifted them up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves, just like we pray before we eat. And after he prayed, there was enough food for everyone and the huge crowd ate lunch. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a fun picnic party to me. <laughs> everybody was full. But then after the picnic party, everybody was leaving and Jesus said, bye everybody. Then he went up to the mountain to pray again. Pray to bless. Picnic party, prayed on the mountain. Oh, I get it. A sandwich prayer isn't a prayer you say when you're eating a sandwich. It's the way that Jesus prayed, then had the picnic party, and then prayed again. The picnic was sandwiched between the two prayers. Yeah, and we can pray sandwich prayers just like Jesus. We always pray before we eat, but do we remember to pray again after we eat and thank God when we get as full as the people in the story? <laughs> And I like to pray before I'm going somewhere to ask if God will help us arrive safely. And then I should pray once we get there to say thank you for letting us arrive safely. Yeah, we can sandwich everything we do in between prayers, just like I'm going to sandwich this cheese back in between my prayer bread <laughs> for lunch. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sandwich prayers. Thank you for hearing us when we pray asking for your help and for hearing us when we thank you. Help us remember to pray as often as Jesus did. We love you. Amen. We join in the prayer for illumination. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts. What we may receive, what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. A reading from the book of Mark. And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties, talking the five loaves, and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people and he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered 5,000 men, immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let the people of God listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Good morning. If we haven't met before, I'm Jim Connor, and it's my privilege to serve as one of the pastors here at First United Methodist Church, Georgetown. Today we will be focusing on the story of the feeding of the 5,000, which was actually like feeding 15 or 20,000 uh, when we add in the, the women and the children who were present. But first, a confession. Uh, I had a little more difficulty finding an opening pun or story that relates uh, to the loaves and the fish until I found this one. A man called his friend to remind him about the church potluck that was taking place next week. My wife and I will bring the cheese, he said, and you and your family need to, br need to bring the bread. His, his friend began to worry. He said, I I'm sure I'll forget these details by next week. Can you help me? And his friend responded, don't worry, just remember, 
Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. This I know. Uh, would you pray with me? Let now the words from my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the great stories I have heard relating to the feeding of the 5,000 uh, comes from uh, author Parker Palmer. And the story takes place uh, at the Chicago O'Hare Airport uh, at a time when there were no security lines and no electronic screening, and you could pretty much carry on whatever you wanted to on the plane. And Palmer was flying out of Chicago uh, to Denver, and he was on the plane, and they pulled away from the gate, and they taxied for what seemed like an inordinate amount of time, and finally they stopped. And he looked out the window and uh, found that they weren't uh, in the line on the runway to take off. In fact, they weren't on the runway at all. Uh, they were instead uh, back in a remote, remote corner of the airport parking lot near some chain link fence. And then the pilot came on the intercom went and shared these words. I have some bad news. There is a storm front in the west, exactly where we're headed, and so we're going to be staying here for a few hours. Now, that's the bad news. The really bad news, the pilot says, we have no food on board. And, of course, this was years back when they actually had food on board, and they would bring it to you at your chair with, on a nice little tray. Well, people groaned. People were becoming angry. And then Palmer said one of the flight attendants stood up in the aisle and took the mic and offered these words. We're really sorry, folks. We didn't plan it this way, but we can't do anything about it right now. We know for some of you this is a big deal. You were looking forward to the meal. We, we know that some of you uh, may have medical issues and, and you need the lunch. So I have an idea. We have a couple of empty baskets here in the front and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass them around. Now, I want everybody to put something in the basket. Some of you I know have brought some snacks with you. There's, you have peanut butter crackers, candy bars, uh, M&Ms. Some of you brought uh, Lifesavers or chewing gum. And if you don't happen to have something that's edible, well, put in a business card or put in a, a picture of your, your grandchild or of your kids. Put in a bookmark. The thing is, I hope everyone will consider putting something in the basket. And then we'll reverse the process. We'll bring the baskets back around and you can take what you need out of them. Well, Palmer said what happened next was nothing short of a miracle. First, the complaining and the gri griping stopped. And then people looked in their pockets and in their briefcases and in their handbags and some got up and, and pulled down their luggage. And before long, people were pulling out salamis and Italian sausage and cheese and crackers and bottles of wine and candy. And people were laughing and people were talking. The flight attendant had transformed a group of anxious people into uh, this community of giving. The flight eventually took off and landed, and as he stepped uh, to the front of the plane, ready to get off, Palmer found that flight attendant and said, you know there's a story in the Bible about what you did. She said, I know the story. That's why we did it. What do you have? The context of the story is, is very important. Uh, John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, was just beheaded. And Jesus was in need of some alone time, time to get away by himself, to grieve, to, to pray, to remember. But the crowds had a funny way of following Jesus, and it was hard for him to get away. The disciples told Jesus, send them away, but Jesus had compassion on them. They need not go away, he said. And then when it came time, he said, you give them something to eat. Maybe the easiest part of the miracle story for us is recognizing that there were only about 15 or 20,000 people gathered who were hungry. If only the same could be said today. We're in, in a world where we produce enough food to, to feed everyone, but yet 821 million folks each night go to bed on an empty stomach. But I digress. The story of the loaves and the fishes, I believe, is one of the most incredible of, found in the Bible, and it is found in each one of the Gospels, the only miracle that is. And looking up to heaven, Jesus took the loaves, and he blessed them, and he broke them, and he gave them to the disciples, and he divided the fish, 
and all those gathered ate and were satisfied. Now our minds sometimes play tricks with us and our creativity uh, sometimes is, uh, takes us to the places to figure out how this possibly could have happened. Uh, was it uh, that there were food trucks that the, were the, the other side of the hill? Was there a caterer that they called? How is it they could have possibly had enough food when they only had those five loaves and two fish? I think the easiest thing for us to accept is that a miracle took place. Jesus prayed. Jesus blessed the elements, blessed the fish and the, the bread, and then he gave it to the disciples. And let's be clear on this. Jesus did not feed the 5,000. The disciples fed the 5,000. And Jesus used what the disciples had to feed the 5,000. Jesus was operating out of a different frame of, of reference. He looked at the same things the disciples looked at, but where they saw not enough, he saw plenty. He saw plenty of time, plenty of food, plenty of possibilities with the resources that they had. And while Jesus might not have known exactly how things were going to work out, he knew it was time to bless and to pray what was before him. And Jesus also knew that there was plenty of God. And if there was plenty of God, there would be plenty of everything else. We know there's still plenty of God to go around, and there still is for all of us. I was thinking back to some of those transformative moments uh, that, that have been part of my, my life story and, and even part of my ministry. And I think back to high school. Uh, to, it was 1975. I was a junior, uh, and it was the summer we, we took a, a mission trip, our youth group. We took it to this a Native American reservation in Wisconsin. And we went with uh, a number of paintbrushes and other assorted tools. Most of us knew very little about painting a house or putting up drywall or tarring a roof or building a ramp. And we arrived without any engineers or contractors or plumbers. We were just a group of 30 confused-looking suburban teenagers and some adults. Now, there had been some racial tension in that area uh, that summer. And so we were a little leery about arriving, and the stares and looks we received were a little scary. We started imagining what they would be saying to themselves. Do you see who's coming to work on our houses? Who do they think they are, and, and what is it that they brought? Again, that's what we thought. What is it that we brought? I'm going to tell you that I think we brought five loaves and two fish. And the funny thing is, that's also what we found there. Whenever you participate in a work trip, you usually find out a number of things in a hurry. You find that God is able to bless whatever it is you have and to make it enough to do the work that is before you. You find out that God, you're not bringing God to the work site. God has been there all along. And you find that despite your differences with the people that you are working for and working with, we're far more alike than different you're also reminded how important it is to pray. Do I see the need to say it more directly? Let me do it. We went into that week with five loaves and two fish, but we came back with 12 baskets to spare. Not because we were that talented or did anything right, but because my God made good on the promise to match our gifts with God's own gifts. And that combination will always be enough. It is something for us to remember when the crowds look too big, the work seems too hard, and the situation seems too hopeless. With God, there's always more. More grace, more love, more room, more of everything. God invites us to let go and to trust because God continues to be present everywhere and God invites us into God's compassion and abundance. The problem is that sometimes we don't see ourselves in the same way. So how is it you see yourself? What is it that you have? And what is it that you are willing to share? I never imagined when I moved to Texas 21 years ago that I would experience the kind of week we had in the middle of February. Freezing temperatures, power outages, no water, 
an inability to travel even down the street. But an amazing thing happened. We prayed, and God helped us through it. Neighbors and strangers reached out to one another and shared what they had, and many were cared for. Maybe not everyone received that same kind of outreach and care, but it was a little more of a community rally than before at the start of the pandemic when people were hoarding toilet paper. God invites us to let go and to trust. What is our response to those around us, particularly those in need? The disciples and Jesus looked at the crowd. At first, the disciples thought Jesus would send them home. What do you think they thought after the miracle? What is it that you think? Verse 37 is perhaps the, the, the key in the passage for us, which is, uh, you go ahead and feed him. And then the, the last verse, uh, verse 46, and Jesus went off to pray. This is a great story for us on a communion Sunday. Jesus divides this large group, 5,000 plus, into groups of 150. Uh, he creates community as they share a meal together. And as we know, especially in the United Methodist Church, it's an open table, which means it's for everyone, for all who hunger. Afterwards, Jesus sent the disciples and the crowd away, and he went up to pray. And I, it doesn't say what he prayed for, but you know, I've got a feeling that the prayer went something like this. Jesus offered a prayer of thanksgiving for all that had happened, for the folks who had come to listen to him share about God's love and forgiveness and hope and the importance of community and being there for each other. I know Jesus thanked God for that lesson that the disciples learned, that what they had was enough uh, to, to feed that, that mighty crowd. And I kind of think Jesus also might have been thinking about the disciples to, to follow, uh, you and me. And if Jesus didn't pray for us on that mountain, uh, Jesus is praying for us now that we too will learn that lesson, that with, with God's help, all that we have will be more than enough to meet the needs that we have and, and just as importantly to meet the needs of those who are around us. That's good news. What is it you have? Be grateful for it and share it. Thanks be to God. Amen. We would like to thank you for joining us for this time of worship. This brings us to the time of service where we are called to share our gifts. I want to thank you for all the support that you have given us throughout this year. You've helped us to continue our ministries and our mission and our outreach. You've helped us to provide a quality service to continue to try to live somewhat of a normal church life in this tough year. There are several ways to give. You can give online, you can text to give, or you can mail a check to the church. But please know, we are so grateful for all of your support, and thank you isn't enough. Will you pray with me? Loving and merciful God, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can trust you. You're an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. As we offer these gifts, help us take them and use them for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence to whoever may need them. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
as we gather around Christ's table. Hopefully you do have your elements in front of you. And, and as we learned in the story, it's not that you have something specific. It doesn't have to be Welch's. It doesn't have to be Hawaiian bread. Uh, it can be whatever God has already provided you with in your home or wherever you're having communion. Or if you stop by this morning to pick up uh, the communion elements uh, and you have that, go ahead and use that. There's plenty. Uh, we, we come to this table to receive this incredible, mysterious grace. Um, we come seeking to draw closer to this God who gave everything for us. Uh, and we remember that, that what Jesus did later with his disciples was he gathered them together. They were in town to celebrate the Passover. They were sharing that meal together. And it was in the middle of that meal that he kind of interrupted everything. Jesus did something different. And the first thing he did was he took the bread that was being served with that meal and he gave God thanks for this bread. Then he broke it. And he offered it to his friends. And he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And they went back to their meal and, and their celebration of Passover. And as that meal concluded, Jesus then interrupted again. He took the cup. And he gave thanks to God. And he offered it to his disciples. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Drink from this. Know the forgiveness that I offer you. And do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, holy and gracious God, pour out your spirit on all of us gathered around your table and pour out your spirit on these gifts that you have given to us. And as we share in this meal, may we not only receive your mercy, your grace, and your forgiveness, but may we know your love. And may we become truly the body of Christ at work in this world that you love and have created. And so we offer ourselves, we offer all that we are as we receive these gifts of grace from you. In the name of your Son, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At home, if you received one of the cups from the drive-thru, I just want to remind you there's a little clear film on top. If you open that first, it will reveal the wafer that's under there. Uh, go ahead and pull that out, and then you can open the foil top to get to the juice. Um, guys, come. Let's celebrate communion together. One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout. Oh
I'd like to invite you now to join with me as we sing our closing hymn, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Friends, before we move into our benediction, we do have an announcement for you today. I want to introduce you to Stacy Arnold, the chair of our Pastor Parish Relations Committee. Hello, everyone. This past week, our Pastor Parish Relations Committee met with our district superintendent, and we were informed that Pastor Yvonne will be appointed to First United Methodist Church of Hearst this summer. We will be planning some creative ways so that you will be able to have some time with her before she leaves our church. And you will also be receiving an email with more information. Friends, I want to invite you to remember to breathe. Go ahead and take in a deep breath. I understand it was as much a surprise to you as it was to me. But I want to remind you, God cares for us. God will take care of us. God will provide for us. Remember the story that Jim shared in his message with us today about the people stuck on a plane and there was no food there and they were told they would have to wait at the end of the taxiway for a number of hours or in a remote corner of the airport. And of course, that wasn't what they wanted to do. And then they started to wonder about food and and the flight attendant took, took a basket and passed it around and said, if you brought any food, put it in here, right? You remember the story. God will take care of us. God will continue to provide for us, not just what we need, but abundantly. So friends, go forth trusting in this God who loves you abundantly. Go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.